Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock in the morning here, uh, Wednesday morning, April 21st, and I'm happy to be here. This is One Child Abuse Survivor to Another. We're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com, and uh, the chat room is open, and uh, it's early, but if anybody would like to come sit in there, you're more than welcome to. Um, we're looking at an article I found on um, Stop It Now's website, and Stop It Now has some great information regarding uh, child sexual abuse and, and uh, the issues surrounding it and uh, what is child sexual abuse and, and why do people do it. And um, There's some great information there. That's at www dot stop it now dot org and you can go there and pull up this article too and um, this article is called prevent child sexual abuse facts about sexual abuse and how to prevent it and um, it's a it's great information and I just think that we can't talk about child abuse or child sexual abuse enough right and I'm just one more voice you know I just wanted to add my voice to everyone else out there who's already doing this work and who's already laid the groundwork really for for the rest of us to come along and and join in and you know I just appreciate being able to be here to do this first of all and you know I'm not a professional I don't hold any professional counseling certificates or therapist certificates so I'm just a survivor who's walk managed to walk out most of my healing thank god and you know just wanted to be uh, one more voice out there to tell people you know to keep holding on to, to reach out and get help where you can um, you know, whether it's group support, uh, online group support, or a therapist or counselor, you know, just to make sure that people understand and realize they're not alone, and that silence really is a, a huge problem and a barrier for survivors of child abuse of any kind, uh, because it keeps you trapped, you know, it's, it's, I was, I remained very much uh, silent and anonymous for a long, long time, and I found that when I did speak out about my my past and, and the abuse that I suffered as a child, it generally drove people away because they thought I was just too wounded. You know, they just couldn't, they didn't know how to talk to me. They didn't even know how to, um, they couldn't help me, I think, and it was very uncomfortable for them. So they, you know, they would just eventually break off the friendship. So, you know, I spent a lot of years alone and, and very much in silence. And when I finally decided to, 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 get busy, get off the couch and and get busy helping people was when I started my real healing journey about three years ago. And then I decided about seven, eight months, about seven months ago now to write a blog, a public facing blog about my story. And it really freed me to do that, you know, but just to get, just to break the silence. And and also I I joined some online support groups and that really helped out because I met some awesome people uh, who have, you know, really, who were there to support me and and um, just there for me and, and just let me know that, you know, that I wasn't alone and that, you know, just to keep keep going, keep moving forward. And that, that really helped a lot. It really aided in, in the whole healing process. I really believe that. So I just encourage everybody to keep hanging in there. And, you know, as far as child abuse issues and, and, and child sexual abuse, we, we have to make noise. You know, we have to stand up and make some noise because this is just continually being ignored and, and swept under the carpet and, and pushed away. Nobody wants to deal with it. No one wants to talk about it. And um, unless we actually start talking about it and start figuring out how we're going to stop child abuse, stop child sexual abuse, how we're going to prevent it from happening in the first place as a society as a whole, you know, around the world, and uh, not just North America, but everywhere, right? Um, it's a real problem. It's been there forever. It's just that... Uh, you know, like I said, it's been silenced, and so have the people who have been trying to speak out quite often. So that's why I think everybody needs to get involved and raise their voice and, uh, you know, get involved in whatever way they can, because I know everybody has, uh, you know, limited resources and whatnot and time, but if we all do something, even a small part, um, I think it really matters, and and it all adds up to be one big, huge uh, leap and and jump, you know, to to actually finding ways to, to... to correct this issue, right? The children are suffering and die, dying every day at the hands of caregivers, parents, um, you know, child sexual predators, and it's just wrong. It needs to stop. And so, you know, I'm just happy to be here to, to be one more voice. And, you know, so it's not a professional show. Please listen at your own discretion, especially because I cover all re- abuse-related topics, right? So you want to, if if the subject of abuse bothers you and you just know it's going to bother you, please turn off the show. It's your You have to listen at your own discretion. And if you're a young person under the age of 18, I fight for child rights, I stand up for child rights, and so I stand up for child online safety, and you need to make sure that someone knows what you're doing online. 
because you could save your life and you could save your friends' lives by telling them that too. And um, there's a lot of crazy people out there trying to get a hold of children. And FBI, you, if you want to get on a good website to check out some good information regarding child online safety, the FBI has a great website. And the estimated reports are in the millions. So that's how many child sexual predators are out there waiting to get a hold of children. And it's really bad. So you have to tell uh, adults, you know, if you have been contacted by someone who has tried to, to uh, sort of... Uh, maybe send you some pornography or try to get information out of you, such as your name and your address and stuff like that. There's so many ways you can protect yourself and your family online. And all you have to do is start typing into your browser, online safety, internet safety, uh, child internet safety, things like that. And you can bring up some great information on how to stay safe online because it's so important. Uh, we know that kids are dying at the hands of uh, child sexual predators. And if they're not dying, their lives are ruined after being assaulted by a child sexual predator. So you want to make sure you keep yourself safe. And, and I ask everyone under the age of 18 to have permission to listen to this show. And really only because of the adult material that's in, in this show, in all the blog talk shows that I do, you know, because um, it's so important, right? You, you, you need to uh, let them know what you're doing and listening to online. And then they can help you if you have questions, right? Let's say it's a topic you haven't heard of before. And you're just not so sure, like uh, it's kind of confusing or it's sort of upsetting to you. You can ask them for us uh, to help you find some information, and uh, you know, so an older person, an older adult, usually can help you find this information. Someone who you trust, right? A teacher, counselor, coach, um, you know, a parent who cares, right? Someone in your life who really cares about what you're doing, and uh, then they can help you, you know. And then maybe you can get involved locally too, as a, as a youth uh, in your community to help prevent, you know, child uh, abuse, right, of any kind, and also just to, to become aware and educated. It's so important, right? You can save your own life doing that. So, but, but you know, that's what I'm saying. We need to stand, stand up for children, and we need to stand up for children's rights. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm just happy to be able to be here and do this. So we've got about 20 minutes left. We left off yesterday in a section of this article here, um, why do people sexually abuse, right? And they were saying, like, each person who sexually abuses a child, I'm just kind of reading from the page, is motivated by issues that are unique to that individual. And, you know, media images of child molesters and portrayals of their personalities may actually make it more difficult to recognize inappropriate behaviors than those we know. Uh, there's another article, and I can't remember where it's from, um, but I know you can find it on the Dreamcatchers for Abused Children website, www.dreamcatchersforabusedchildren.com or http dreamcatchersforabusedchildren.com. You can ch in, their, in the uh, child sexual abuse uh, section, there you can find this um, information regarding who, uh, a, who a, 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 sexual, a child sexual predator is. And it says, you know, this would be anyone. This would be uh, your neighbor. This would be someone who who you look up to in the community. This would be a teacher, a coach, a parent, uh, uh, a relative, an aunt and uncle, a cousin. Uh, this would be the neighbor that, that drives the fancy red sports car and has lots of money. This could be, um, you know, the guy down the street who just sort of hangs around on the corner and, and talks to kids all the time and seems very friendly. We, we have a sort of an, in, uh, you know, we don't have a good view of what a, a child sexual predator looks like because they always portray them as looking like these crazy people on TV, you know, with their hair all, you know, disheveled, and they might look like they're homeless people, and, and homeless people are not necessarily um, abusers, <laughs> right? Uh, these people that abuse children are generally uh, uh, out upstanding members in society, you know, and they generally ha are in positions of power, and that's why they're allowed to do what they do and get away with it. Um, they're very good at manipulating people. Manipulating is actually one of their key, uh, you know, tools in doing what they do. And so they have to be pretty intelligent and pretty smart uh, to continue to do what they do. And they they might be your neighbor and they might be very friendly, but they might be a child sexual predator. So that's why it's so important to, be, you know, educate yourself and educate your kids uh, regarding child sexual abuse and child sexual predators, What to, you know, to, how to keep them safe, right? Because, you know, you don't want your child to be end up one of these statistics, right? This is the whole issue. And if you're a young person listening to this show, you don't want to end up one of those statistics, right? So they said that, you know, sometimes people who are attracted um, uh, to children is because some people's primary sexual attraction is children. They said some never act out on those feelings. They've actually done studies and talked to people who 
you know, I guess this would be psychologists and psychiatric uh, uh, people who've done studies, they said that, you know, lots of people have these tendencies but don't go on to actually do any uh, uh, abusing of any children. Um, it's just, it's, it's very sad. And I think that, you know, I don't understand how a person could be that way. But I just think that there has to be some, there has to be some way of treating that. You know what I mean? I don't know. But this article actually continues to go on about that. So we're going to keep looking at it. And um, it says some people sexually abuse children just for, it's an issue of control. And, um, you know, maybe they've lost their job or, or they're just uh, economically down or maybe they're, they're getting a divorce or whatever. They just feel an unusual amount of stress. So there's lots of reasons why people sexually abuse children. But um, the sad fact is, is that it needs to stop and that children, you know, should, should not have to lose their innocence just because an adult thinks that they have the right to do whatever they want to that child. So the child is never at fault. And so the adult or, you know, whoever is responsible, whether it's a youth or an adult, is at fault because the abuser is always at fault. So just to, so everybody knows is on the same page here, uh, the child, uh, can, the victim is never at fault. Uh, the abuser has a choice to either to, to to either commit a crime because child sexual abuse is a crime, or they have the choice to not commit a crime, and so they choose to commit crimes. And um, you know it's unfortunate, but they do, and uh, they are responsible for that. And you know no one is holding holding their arm behind them and and, and saying if you don't do this, I'm going to break your arm. Um, they do it on their own free will and free choice, and that's why I don't feel sorry for them when they get busted. And I don't think that we should be protecting them as much as we do. We need to protect our children and our families. Uh, you need to. You know, I don't have any children. I know if I did, I'd be looking out for them. And so parents need to work at protecting their own children and their own families, right, and stop worrying about protecting all these child molesters and and, and convicted child sexual abusers, right? Uh, because they don't need protection. They need to just go away and disappear somewhere and get some serious help uh, with what's going on in their mind and in their soul because to be able to sexually abuse a child, you have to be quite sick, I think. Um, there has to be something completely wrong with your makeup and completely wrong with you, you know what I mean? So that's all I have to say. That's my gripe this morning. So we'll continue reading this article here. It says, Some people act impulsively when presented with an unexpected opportunity to sexually abuse a child. Others, particularly youth with high social status or with social or emotional delays, may not even fully understand the harmful impact of their abusive actions. Easy access to child pornography online and sexually oriented online chat groups have eliminated many of the hurdles that previously discouraged some people from acting on their sexual interests in minors. Viewing sexual images of children and participating in forums that support sexual interactions involving children may make sexually abusive behavior seem normal or acceptable and thereby may increase the risk for, ha for hands-on offenses. Some adults sexually abuse a child to feel the power and control they don't feel in their relationships with other adults. And there are just a few of, uh, these are just a few of the many reasons why someone may choose to sexually abuse a child. No reasons, excuse, or, you know, or can justify sexualized behaviors involving a child. No matter what the reason for the abuse, the effects on children may be severe and may last a lifetime. And I wouldn't doubt that they don't last a lifetime. I know that, you know, um, I was molested as a child by a family member, and no, nothing was done about it. I did tell my mom, and you know she was already abusing me, so she she didn't care, and she told me it was just my problem. I was going to have to deal with it, and so you know that's just the whole issue. It does affect people for their lifetime, and um, it, it's just something that you don't want to have happen to your child. So you have to pay attention and know the signs of sexual uh, of sexual abuse in children. You got to know what to look for. You know, your child may not come to you. They might be, uh, they might have been threatened. They might have been, uh, in, co you know, coerced or any number of reasons why a child would not tell someone that they've been abused out of fear, maybe out of shame. Uh, who knows, right? There's, an, uh, you know, just any number of reasons why a child would not come forward uh, to say, hey, so I've been sexually abused by somebody. You know what I mean? So you have to look out for your children and know the symptoms and the signs of child sexual abuse. Because there's specific signs that you can look for, uh, behavioral uh, signs as well as physical signs. And um, so, you, you know, as a parent, you really want to become educated 
and understand the situations, uh, you know, the, the the symptoms and the signs of actually all abuse. And that way you can look out for your children, right, just to make sure that it's not happening to them. It says here, can people who sexually abuse children stop it? And this is the next part of this article. It says, yes. In order to stop, people who sexually abuse children must want to change and must be able to get specialized treatment. Adults, adolescents, and children with sexual behavior problems can change their abusing, abusing behavior. They can learn to live healthy, productive lives in which they no longer harm innocent children. You've probably heard or read the, uh, the misinformation about that all people who have sexually abused will abuse again. With all those stories on TV and in the paper, it's not easy to remember that the people who abuse hundreds of victims are only a few. Really extreme cases. Most people who sexually abuse children are not like those you see on TV. Treatment works. Many people who abuse will learn to control themselves around children if they are offered specialized treatment and and appropriate community oversight. When people with sexual behavioral problems have support and are accountable to their friends and families, they're more likely to complete their treatment programs and live productive, abuse-free lives. Again, when we confront these behaviors at the earliest stages, especially in children and teens, they are most likely to change and not abuse again. If you are concerned about your own or someone else's sexualized behaviors towards children, please call Stop It Now. Uh, Stop It Now's confidential toll-free national helpline, which is 1-888-PREVENT. And uh, I don't know if that's a working number or not. I haven't tried to call it. But, uh, you know, you could, you know, that's one, another resource you could check out, right? For supportive guidance, information, or resources, or visit us on the web at www.stopitnow.org. And I mean, sure, I'd like to believe that, that, you know, if a child sexual predator or someone who has sexual tendencies towards children actually got some real help, that they would not go on to continue to abuse uh, children, right, sexually. And that's that would be best case scenario, you know, that would be the best case uh, scenario for sure for children to, you know, but the problem being is that they know and that's why they, you know, they put these uh, ankle bracelets and they have uh, these child sexual uh, predators and and stuff, um, you know, sort of having to keep in touch with the the, the national sex offenders uh, registry and stuff like that. Those would be people who were convicted and also um, who had probably done multiple acts or or very serious and deadly acts of child sexual abuse against children. So it's really sad and wrong. Um, you know, it's just not right at all. And the amount of people out there who's actually who have actually abused sexually abused children and been convicted of it is it would actually really um, shock you and it would probably make you scared and you probably wouldn't even want to go outside ever again. Uh, but the thing is, is that we can't live in fear and it's not good for your children to live in fear. And so that's why education and prevention is the key. Uh, awareness, education, and prevention, right? Because none of us can just stay home and lock the doors and not go out. That's not a healthy lifestyle. But we do have to protect ourselves and our families, right? And so I think the best way is just becoming educated regarding the issues surrounding child sexual abuse and um, child sexual predators and online safety. And you could really, you know, do a lot towards keeping yourself and your children safe, uh, you know, at any given time. Because, you know, nobody wants to just stay locked up in their house all the time. That's not a good way to live. And, um, you know, in teaching kids fear is really wrong because uh, fear is actually really harmful. And it, it does a lot of damage to, you know, whether it's psychologically and physically to the body to live in fear. So, you know, the whole idea is not to not to live in fear and not to, not to teach your children to live in fear. But I think education, that's why education is so important and primary prevention, and that is what uh, basically I'm doing and everybody else out there who is raising awareness uh, and, and, and promoting education and prevention of child abuse and child sexual abuse. It's uh, called primary prevention because it's so important because it, you, you can really help safeguard yourself and your children if you know what to look for and you know what's actually happening out there. Uh, you know, we can't go around pretending this is a perfect world um, because it's not. And we can't go around pretending that children aren't being sexually abused even if in our, our own communities right next door, you know, uh, because that's happening. And so really just ignorance is not bliss in this case. And so you want to you wanna make sure you're, you are 
getting all the information regarding child sexual abuse and abuse of all types, right? And keep yourself safe. You know, know what to look for, know what to be on the lookout for, know what to be aware of. Even young young people need to know how to keep themselves safe on the street, you know, when you're out running around with your friends. And uh, you just kind of need to know that there's all kinds of crazy people out there doing all kinds of crazy things to people. And uh, there's ways you can keep yourself safe, you know. Don't walk down alleys. Uh, these are things, you know, that your parents might have told you, and you just think, oh, well, they're just a bunch of, you know, nerds. And, you know, everybody walks down the alley. Well, I, I actually walked down an alley and almost got snatched by a child sexual predator with a friend of mine, a little friend of mine one time. And luckily we made it to safety because I told her to run, and we took off and ran. But this guy chased us for about, I don't know, over a block and then casually walked across a park while we were standing on this lady's porch kicking her door down. And, you know, this is the situation that's going on out there. Um, children are coming in contact with all kinds of child sexual predators. Uh, and, you know, you might not even know it because your child might not even tell you that they've actually been in contact with a child sexual predator. And so, um, you know, you can you cannot do enough to keep yourself safe, you know, and to keep your children safe. You have to kind of go overboard and very proactive on it and not sit and live in fear because that won't help, you know. But education and, and awareness is definitely the key. And just be, you know, keeping yourself alert and aware all the time of what is going on. And, uh, you know, in parking lots and uh, you want to be safe in parking lots and you want to know that people will sneak around to the other side of your car when you don't see them. And then when you open up your door, they'll be behind you and they can knock you out and, and take your keys and put you in the car and away they go. They're, you know, you have to learn as a citizen that there's all kinds of sick people out there and uh, they're they're just waiting kind of to grab a hold of somebody who's not paying attention. Right. And whether it's a child or an adult. So. You have to keep yourself safe on, on every level, whether you're an adult or a child or a youth, uh, you know, a teenager, a young person, a young adult. You really have to be aware that this is going on and um, keep yourself safe, right? There's all kinds of ways to keep yourself safe, and the best idea is just to get educated on, on how to go about doing it. And it's, um, it's worth it because you could save your life. You could save your children's lives, right? So they said here, um, what about children who sexually interact with other children? This is the next portion of this article. And I've actually heard people talking about that, like on Facebook. People were actually, uh, there were some groups that were actually mentioning some of this stuff uh, regarding children who sexually interact with other children. Because there's been reports in the paper, quite a lot of reports lately, uh, regarding children who have um, sexually assaulted other children. Um, and, and sometimes they, they're not quite sure if it was you know, actually an assault, but just more like sexual interacting or, or contact with other children. So the whole, you know, the whole thing is, is it is an issue. It does happen. It, it's a lot. That's not talked about a whole lot, but it needs to be talked about because these are underlying issues that uh, if they're not caught in time, you know, these children who se who sexually interact and, and abuse other children will quite possibly go on to do that as an adult. And then you got to wonder why they're actually doing it. So let's read this article here. It says, when children or adolescents interact in a sexual way, it is sometimes difficult to tell the difference between natural sexual curiosity and potentially abusive behaviors. Some sexual activities are normal for children at certain ages. And children, particularly younger children, may engage in inappropriate interactions without understanding the hurtful impact it has on others. For this reason, it may be more helpful to think in terms of a child's sexually harmful behavior rather than sexually abusive behavior. But there are some features of interactions that should raise concerns if you see children involved in sexual play. Consider, for instance, uh, their, their size, like age. In, so, in one of the children, teens involved, is one of the children or teens involved much larger or stronger than the other? Um, the next one is status. Does one of the children or teens have more power in the relationship? For example, a babysitter, a club, or team leader, a socially popular child who bullies others? Ability. Does one of the children or teens have greater mental, emotional, or physical ability than the others or the other? If, is the possible victim disabled or development, developmentally delayed? And then there's power. Is one of the children or teens using tricks, treats, or threats, bribes, or physical force? If you answered yes to any of these questions, the sexual activity may be abusive and a report to Child Protective Services may be appropriate. If you have any questions about what you are seeing or if you need support, please call Stop It Now's Confidential Toll-Free toll Helpline, 1-888-PREVENT, and that's the number that they give there. Um, you, have, <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. you can speak confidentially with a professional about your concerns and learn what, uh, what options and local resources are available to you. Remember, you do not need to be sure that it is abuse to call. By calling, you learn how to get help. 
for all of the children involved. And so that's quite interesting, and I think that's very just that's true. There's places that we can get this information if we see something going on, you know, and, and we think, you know, is that abuse or is it or is it abuse or is it not abuse? You know, there's places that we can uh, phone and, and call and get information to find out if it really is. It's just so important to actually do that because um, in doing so, you know, we can we can actually possibly stop uh, abuse, right? And especially for if it's some if it's involving someone who who, who really <clears throat> excuse me, but my voice is starting to go. If these uh, children are developing developmentally delayed or um, you know disabled, then you really want to keep an eye out on that because it's just a fact that you know people with disabilities and and children with disabilities and developmentally delayed issues uh, are suffer a lot of abuse. You know it's very true and it does happen and they they are kind of candidates and targets for abuse because they generally can't stick up for themselves and you know possibly don't have someone actually watching in and looking in to make sure that there isn't abuse going on right so it's so important that if you if you see something like that um it, that you would report it and and I know that I would uh just to stand up for them because they need somebody to stand up for them and you know doesn't matter uh, development developmentally delayed people and people with disabilities are people too they have every single right that should be afforded to them that every other human being on this planet has and um you know, we can't stick up for them enough either, right? And we can't raise our voices enough to to help them out. Um, you know, people who, who because those people actually have, you know, generally have no protection. And so it's very important to protect people who can't protect themselves, including children. And that's why, you know, it's so important for us to just step in there and make sure that we are doing the right thing and protecting our children, right? So, yeah, there's, this is a great article. There's another section here called What is Age-Appropriate Sexual Behavior? And they go on to talk about like preschool, zero to five years of age, the common and the uncommon uh, behaviors regarding, uh, you know, sexual behaviors. Then they have uh, adolescence, uh, school age, well, school age, six to twelve years of age, adolescence, uh, thirteen to sixteen years of age, and um, it's just such a great article. This there's loads and loads of information on this article, and we'll just take a look at the beginning part of this one, and I think we'll have to finish this one up tomorrow. It says, while learning about their bodies and, and sexuality, children may have uh, behave in, in ways that seem out of sync with their age or development, developmental stage. The chart below describes kinds of behavior that are common and less common in a given developmental stage. Many factors, for example, having an older sibling or unsupervised exposure to certain uh, television, films, games, or song lyrics may increase a child's awareness of knowledge, attitudes, and behaviors of an older age group. Usually, unexpected behavior can be redirected with a simple, with, with a sim, simple instruction. Of uh, particular concern are, co- are uncommon behaviors that a child seems unable to control after being asked to stop. Uh, so, you know, they go on to talk about these different behaviors, and it is good to know because, you know, you can kind of s- sort of see if if, if a if a behavior is actually starting to develop that is not uh, it shouldn't is not age appropriate, then you might know that these children are actually maybe watching stuff on the television they shouldn't be, uh, they, or they might have actually come in contact with a child, a sexual abuser, who's shown them how to do certain things. That's why this is a very imp- it's so, so important for people, for parents, to, to really know their children and to know what to look out for. Um, because, you know, a, a lot of times children, you know, they just don't know about a lot of the, the, the sexual, um, you know, stuff about sex, right? So then you'd have to wonder where they got that information, whether they got it off the TV or whether they have been actually sexually abused by somebody and, as you know, actually, or are being sexually abused by somebody. So it's so important to know your children and, and be looking for these behaviors and stuff. And if they do present themselves, you know, you need to make sure that you check in on it and don't just ignore it and blow it off, right? Because it's so important, right? Because you could save your child's, you could you could really save your child from a lot of abuse. And um, so it's so important. We have about a minute left, and I think we'll just pick up from there tomorrow morning. And uh, thanks, thanks everybody for joining in. I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dream Catchers for Abused Children, volunteer position. I'm so happy to be uh, a part of this organization, 501c3 not-for-profit organization, who you know it's all about promoting uh, awareness, education, and prevention of child abuse of all kinds, of all types, and getting the information out there and the education out there. And the um, website, you want to check that out, it's great, um, HTTP Dreamcatchers for Abused Children.com. And you can get all kinds of information on there regarding signs and symptoms of abuse, 
all the different types of abuse, uh, what to look for, how to report child abuse. It's so important to know how to report child abuse. If we report child abuse wrong, we could ruin a case for a child and they could end up back in the home. And, uh, you know, quite often that's what happens and children end up back in the home and then they're killed, uh, you know, or end up in the hospital due to abuse-related injuries. And so we don't want that to happen. If a child comes and discloses that they're being abused. It's the law. You have to report it. But you also want to know how to report it, right? So that website's great. I love that website, HTTP Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. But there's so many other great uh, websites out there. And so just start t- looking around. Uh, you know, there's so, some great information out there on the web. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'll be, in t- I'll be on tonight, 9.30 p.m. Um, Mountain Standard Time for Child Abuse Prevention and Human Rights Abuse Prevention is up to us. We'll be talking about family violence. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate your support. Have a great day. Bye-bye.